This is Grace Notes. I'm Alan Button, and pleased to have as our guest today, Chase Campbell. Chase is the director of a nonprofit called Pilgrim's Progress, based in Pinehurst. And and Chase, by the way, if uh, I get any of this wrong, you be sure to correct me. But uh, let me start with welcome. Glad to be here. It's a privilege and an honor to, to do things like this. Thanks for having me on here. Well, thank you for taking the time. Tell you what, Chase, let's start with your telling us what exactly Pilgrim's Progress is. Okay, um, Pilgrim's Progress is a nonprofit that I'm blessed to be able to be part of. It's um, We have a location called The Safe House, and what we do is basically introduce people to recovery. It's just a safe environment, chemical-free, when people are transitioning between detox and um, Samaritan Colony primarily, just another inpatient treatment center. So when you say recovery, you're talking about recovery from addiction. Yes, sir. From um, alcohol problems, drug problems, you know, anything, any chemical dependency. Uh Uh-huh. Well, you've spent a lot of time, uh, good time, thinking about the music that you've selected. And I want to let our audience know up front that uh, you've chosen songs that relate to your own experience and the challenges of of addiction and, and recovery. So uh, I, I guess to be a little more uh, explicit about all that, you and I were talking before we came into the studio about how these songs really are like poetry. The meanings uh, often turn in a big way on the experience that the listener brings to the lyrics. Is that fair? Yes, sir. I would say so. They all um, have spoke to me at different parts of my life. Uh-huh. Good. Well, speaking of of your life, uh, tell us what got you into Pilgrim's Progress. What led you to the place where you became the director? Okay, um, I was, to make a long story short, I was a client at one point. Um, I spent a good third of my life in active addiction. Um, You're from Rockingham originally? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm from a place called Rockingham, North Carolina. Just growing up, uh, I had a dad that was an alcoholic. Um, My mom passed away when I was... 12 months old and um my grandma raised me but overall I would say I had a good upbringing you know my grandma did the best she could but as I got older about 17 I um turned drugs and alcohol for a solution to my pain it started out with just marijuana and alcohol and then over time it just turned into full-blown addiction just doing whatever you know anything that would change the way I felt but um that all started after some unfortunate situations when I was 27 I ended up being homeless and um then I asked God for help and then he did and I got into recovery and it's all history from there and you ultimately yourself became a resident of Pilgrim's Progress the safe house yes sir Mm -hmm. um I came there see right after I left detox I stayed for about two and a half three weeks which is longer than a typical stay but um the guys there showed me love, and they just showed me there was a better way of life, and it, it was something I wanted to wanted to pursue doing myself when I had the opportunity to do, you know, give back what was freely given to me. I'd like to come back uh, here in a little bit to what exactly happens at the safe house, uh, but tell us first about this song, the first song you've selected, Hotel California. Why that song? Okay, I just um Hotel California, it's just a good song to me in general. It's a classic, but um I I just think about it, it's a lot
pace well you've you've talked about how that song fits your experience uh, and got you to pilgrim's progress personally tell us what goes on at pilgrim's progress and i might say for the benefit of listeners who may have just tuned in our guest today is chase campbell director of a nonprofit called pilgrim's progress what goes on there um simply put we just introduce people to recovery you know people come leaving detox usually um beat down from drugs and alcohol and we just um we keep them in a safe environment take them to recovery meetings whether it be narcotics anonymous or alcoholics anonymous um take them to church you know just show them love um I myself, I wasn't capable of loving myself at that point, so it really meant a lot for somebody to show me love, you know. And um, we feed them, clothe them if needed. We just do what I believe God would have us to do, you know. And um, just when we do a lot of transporting as far as taking people to treatment, taking them to detox, just go wherever we're called to go. So it's a it's a short term um, residential facility, and by short term. How long? Um, it, it can depend really on availability, but I would say generally it's probably a week, two weeks, just um, when, a, when a bed is open at Samaritan Colony. We keep huh. a pretty good rotation. And what is Samaritan Colony? Um, Samaritan Colony is an inpatient treatment center in Rockingham, North Carolina, 28 days. It's, um, it's more intensive. You know, there's a lot more structure, and they just um, they go to classes and stuff like that, so it really it gives them a better understanding of recovery. You know, we give them the introduction, they give them the the real deal. So the safe house of Pilgrim's Progress is really a place in between the hospital slash detox and the longer term facility at Samaritan Colony. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, um, yes, that's exactly what it is. Just a safe environment between detox and, um, Samaritan Colony. I know a, a lot of people, if they were to just go back home, um, you know, without a solution to their, their issue, chances are they would unfortunately probably relapse, you know, because they they don't know anything different. You know, if it wasn't for the safe house, I believe that's what probably would have happened to me if I would have went back to the environment I was in. You've alluded to what I would call a spiritual dimension to what goes on at Pilgrim's Progress. In fact, I gather the name uh, has something uh, to suggest about that, taking us back to John Bunyan's book. Tell us more about the spiritual dimension of, of the safe house. Oh, I would say, um, I mean, it's just what Jesus would have us to do as far as loving our neighbor and just um, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, you know, things like that. And we just, um, I don't know, what I've learned is it's a, it's a spiritual solution. The addiction is what, what I believe. I mean, it's a physical disease, but it's also a... Um, our literature refers it as a spiritual malady. You know, it's just a problem within our spirit that um, it's just pain, pain driven. You know, and um, I believe God's the only thing that can that can help that. But in um addiction, I believe we take a lot of different things and put them trying to fill this void in our heart. You know, and God's the only thing that can fill it. But and you speak from personal experience, I yes, gather. sir. Yes, sir. And I'm grateful to be able to say that today. They say um. Sometimes you you have to learn from your mistakes, and I believe if you do learn from them, then they're lessons. You mentioned to me earlier uh, that you are the actually the co-author of a book with one of our former guests here on Grace Notes, Anthony McCauley. Uh, what's the book? Tell us about it. Uh, it's um it's called Rebuilt Through Recovery. It's just a compilation of um seven different people's recovery stories. I was blessed to be able to be a part of it, and um it just it kind of breaks down um, different people's stories about where they came from, and it's all different people, you know, so they come from different places, different ways of life. But um, addiction touches all those, you know, so it's just basically what it was like, what happened, and what it's like today of different perspectives, people in recovery. And that book is available? Yes, sir. It's on Amazon. Um, Just look up Anthony McCauley or or Chase Campbell and just Uh rebuilt through recovery. It's a green cover and it's uh it's like a, a prison you know it's you'll you'll see it you'll see it. very good yeah you said uh, a couple of minutes ago that it sounds like you sort of take things a day at a time and, and go wherever god leads you in terms of your work at pilgrim's progress 
it reminds me of your having told me about uh, mission trips you've been on. Uh, speaking of going where God leads you, like South Africa and Costa Rica. Yes, sir. Tell yes. us more. Yes, sir. It's just been amazing experiences. Um, you're asking me about dreams and things I want to do with Pilgrim's Progress, and I've I've learned when I just put it in God's hands, things just fall into my lap, and um, I've been blessed to be able to go to Costa Rica a couple of times just to just to help people in need. And um, actually, this past January, I was able to go to South Africa just short term mission trips, and um. I don't know, there's a whole world out there, you know, and I think a lot of people don't get to see it, but um, you do, like, it's, I don't know, it's just God's creation, and just, it was an amazing experience. With people needing help everywhere. Yes, sir, and um, it was different, it was different things, too. When we went to Costa Rica, one time it was just rebuilding this village that was caught on fire, like, there was a fire in the village. Um, another time it was demoing a building to make it into a church, and um. In South Africa, I got to deal with the kids one week, you know, the kind of stuff you see on TV, um, real rural area. And then after that, I was actually able to, um, in Cape Town, we, we dealt with homeless people that struggle with addiction. And then um, I actually got to volunteer at a um, in, an outpatient treatment center, which was really neat. Even over across the world, God was still using my experiences to help others, and that was really it was very fulfilling to be able to do that. Tell us about this next song, Chase. Why Landslide? Okay, um, Landslide means a lot to me. One, because I love Fleetwood Mac. But two, it's just um, when, I, when I hear that song, I think about a relationship with someone that they just can't imagine their life without. You know, they built their whole life around them. And um, I believe in addiction. That's, that's how it feels getting sober. You know, it's like I can't imagine a life without the substances. But... I also can't imagine going forward like that. And I think um, the song really speaks numbers on that. Speaking of bringing meaning to poetry, that's what's going on here with you. Is that fair? Yes, sir. I would definitely say so. And the song actually, um, when when I first heard it, I never thought of anything like that. But then over time, I think when I hear it, it, it hits different now, you know, and I think that's really neat. Let's hear it. Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. I took my love and I took it down. I climbed a mountain and I turned around. Well, landslide, bring it down. That was Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. Chase, tell us something about the success of Pilgrim's Progress of the Safe House. It's just, um, it's, it seems like it's always growing and just, I don't know, I believe when you're doing God's work, things that are supposed to happen, happen. And um, I don't know, most of all, it's given me a purpose and a meaning in life today, and I'm truly grateful for that. You were telling me earlier about the success as compared to other facilities on the East Coast. Oh, yes, sir. That's that's in reference with the colony and everything as a whole, but um Samaritan colony. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. It's um in the top three on the East Coast. We have um I actually have a client right now from Alabama, but we have people from Texas, New York, all kinds of places coming. As long as there is availability, um God has a plan. If it's meant to be, it'll be. So Pilgrim's Progress and the Safe House and Samaritan Colony, uh, they've made a name for themselves. They've gotten to be known. You you get referrals from all over. It sounds like yes, sir. Um, a lot of times it's just word of mouth. It'll be someone that's been through the program, and um, you know they want to, you know, when you have a solution and other people need it, you want to share it. And they say in recovery, if you want to keep the gift, you got to give it away. So so it works a lot of times. Just one addict or one alcoholic helping another. Give me that line again about gifts. If you want to keep it, you got to give it away. If you want to keep it, you got to give it away. Yeah, or um. Keep your cup full by pouring into others. Uh huh. They're cliche sayings, but they they mean a lot. You know, you don't hear them so much for no reason. A lot of truth to yeah. cliches, for sure. You made reference earlier without actually, I think, putting it in these terms, uh, but you were telling me before we came into the studio about paying back. Uh, is there anyone in particular, or uh, are there others? in particular, in your life that have 
made a, a special difference. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I believe God has a way of placing people in your life at the right moment. And there's a, there's a lot of people, um, I think if it wasn't for people like Billy Thomas with the safe house or Harold Pearson and Mark Christopher with Samaritan colony, or even, um, preachers in Rockingham, like there's a preacher named Gary Richardson that played a big role in my recovery. You know, he, he's with, or, or was with place of grace. You were saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, a homeless shelter in, in Rockingham um, called Place of Grace. Um, when I was at my lowest point, I remember asking him for help, and he, he told me to get help, and um, it didn't sit right with me at the time, but the truth is that's the best help I ever got. You know, um, I remember just having no place to go and sitting in this building, and um, at that point I started thinking about what he was saying about you need help, and I, I asked God for help, and he, he gave it, you know, and I believe if anyone did the same thing, it would. And regardless if it's addiction or not, you know, if we just fully surrender our problems to God and ask him for help, he, he always does, in my experience. Tell me, Chase, uh, where are you headed? What are you looking forward to with Pilgrim's Progress or, or otherwise? Um, I mean, as far as Pilgrim's Progress goes, that's my primary purpose in life, you know, at this moment, you know, just helping others. And, um, you know, I can't really say as far as what I look forward to because I just things just happen, you know, I don't really have to plan them out, and um, things have been good so far, you know, um, I just, wherever God takes us, you know, and um, as far as personal, I do, um, I would like to start a store one day, and um, I've already started it kind of on eBay, just selling shoes and selling retro video games and stuff like that, and um, I mean, I have big dreams as far as that goes, one day I want a store, and um, like a physical store and I want to work people that are in recovery and that also are passionate about recovery and one side of it be shoes and one side of it be video games, you know, and then have your employees, you mean, be those who are in recovery. Yeah, yes, sir. And, um, ironically, I want people to be able to bring things that are maybe not so favorable or broken and we repair those as well. And I believe that kind of says a lot to recovery. You yeah, know? That, that fits right in. Yeah, and then um, put a certain percentage of it towards the nonprofit. You know, I, I want to continue to give back. But but honestly, that's not on the the main no. burner. You know, that's it's, a it's side. Not, that's, yeah. that's, that's maybe long term. That's, yes, sir. I think um, right now, I think God has me exactly where he wants me, and I want to continue doing what I'm doing. But in the future, at some point, I'd like to start a physical store just to add on to my online store. Tell us about this third song, Chase, Don't Stop Believing" by Journey. Mm -hmm. Why that song? Well, that's just a great song and a classic, like, like the other ones really. But um, one, I just feel like it tells a story of um, just people in not so favorable con conditions that didn't stop believing and, you know, just kept pushing. I think that's what life's all about, growth, you know, and um stepping out of the comfort zone into something better. And that's, that's what, I mean, the song gives hope to me, you know. And um, on a side note, I used to, in my drinking days, sing it for karaoke. Uh-huh. Uh, so you're a singer, too. I I thought so. I don't believe anyone else did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I still sing sometimes in the shower or in the car, but usually not where people can hear me. <laughs> it's a hidden talent. <laughs> Well, the, the music that you've selected, uh, Chase, it obviously is is biographical in a real sense, uh, autobiographical for you. Yeah. Appreciate, again, the thought you've put into your selections. Thank you. I, I, when um, I first got asked about the, the radio show, that was probably, I thought, the hardest thing about it, you know, just figuring out what song should I do. You mm -hmm. know, I want something perfect, you know, mm -hmm. something that'll help someone else, you know, and something that I can speaks volumes in my life. So I prayed about it, and those were the songs. Chase, it's been special having you here. Thank you very much for taking the time to be with us and to tell us your story. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's really been a blessing. Um, I hope that I said something today to someone that helps, you know, and I believe um, if it just inspires one person to have hope that there's a better life out there, then God did his job, you know, and he always does his job, so... And um, just thank you for having me. If anyone wants to reach me directly, 